That's not what I need. <sighs> hmm? Oh, okay. Whew, crisis averted. I made it here, fourth graders. I thought I was going to be late. Huh. Mrs. Lawson here. I'm so glad that you're here today to learn about tsunamis with us. And let's go ahead and get started. All right. So lesson 14 today, guys, we are going to go ahead and look at our learning intention. We are learning to analyze and explain concepts in a scientific text. We're also learning how to use details from the text when we're drawing those inferences that we've been working on. We know we are successful today when we can analyze text features to help our understanding of the text, refer back to details in the text, and make those inferences about the text. All right, so I was wondering, do you guys remember what are some of the text features in the book that we're reading. We're reading about this tsunami unfolds, right? So what are some text features? Let's see, there's one, two, three. And then at the very back, there's a text feature. So you guys remember what some of those are called? Yeah, I heard headings, photographs, captions, text boxes, the glossary in the back of the book, some bold words, diagrams. There are all kinds of text features um, and we use them to help us understand what the text is trying to teach us. So if you hadn't noticed, this word is a crisis. So luckily we avoided a crisis of me being late. I made it today, but this is kind of a different use of the word crisis. At the Daiichi plant, workers struggled to manage the nuclear crisis. What do you think that means? And if you see that picture. It is a difficult or dangerous situation that needs serious attention. So some people use that word and say things are a crisis, but this is a real crisis with the tsunami, right? All right, so we, I want you to try and write this word down. It's a tricky one. We kind of read it in the text yesterday. So what is this word? Well, I'm gonna give you a hint. This actually comes from the French word debris. I don't know how to say it in French, but it means to break into pieces. So the word debris means what? Yeah, it's when something is breaking into pieces like buildings, um, or just different things are breaking and what the pieces are is debris. Now, what about this word? I'm gonna give you another hint if you don't know what it means. Oh, I said the word debris, but the word unique comes from the old Greek um, word that means one. So if the word, if that is meaning one, if you're unique, you're special. You're like the only one like you. And that's why um, it's important to know where those base words come from. So for your foundational skill today, your practice, you're gonna read this passage about the family restaurant. And the word from French that you're focusing on are words like apartment, menu, scene, and this word restaurant, guys, Miss Lawson still struggles to spell that right. So the reason why some of these are tricky spellings is because they're actually from French. All right, let's go ahead and keep on going in this story. Let me get my arrow. Dealing with destruction. That night, temperatures dropped and it was snowing in some areas. People huddled together in dark evacuation centers while strong aftershocks kept rumbling. Across the country, about six million homes were without electricity and one million were without water. Many people had no food or heat. Wow, that sounds really hard. Can you imagine having no food, no heat, you lost your home, no water, it's a lot. Did you know the wave that traveled around the world? In Hawaii, the tsunami created waves 11 to 12 feet high Nine foot high waves reached California and Oregon in the United States, sinking boats and destroying a harbor. 
about 18 hours after the quake, waves from the tsunami reached the coast of Antarctica where they cracked the ice shelf. Holy smokes. March 11, 7.30, hashtag quake, high school flooded, but students are safe on third floor. All right, we're on Friday at 7.30 p.m. Worst of all, many people were separated from their families with no way to find out who had survived and who had died. Roads were blocked and the train service was shut down. Many people, especially in cities such as Tokyo and Sendai, oh, I even looked that up. Sometimes it's hard to remember all the cities. Sendai started walking home. In some cases, the long trek would take days. All right. Did you know Thucydides? Thucydides, Thucydides I can't say his name correctly. Thucydides was a historian from ancient Greece. He was the first to record a connection between earthquakes and tsunamis. He wrote that the first sign of a tsunami is often the sudden draining of a harbor as the sea pulling away from the coast. Rising radiation levels. At the Daiichi plant, workers struggled to manage the nuclear crisis. The floodwaters had damaged the generators, so crews were desperately pumping seawater into the reactors to keep them cool. By now, radiation levels near the plant measured eight times higher than normal. Officials ordered thousands of people living near the plants to evacuate. So here it's, is a headline, government declares state of emergency at number one. Did you know the world helps? Many countries prepared to send search and rescue teams to Japan. Other nations and relief organizations promised supplies and money. Individuals and private organizations such as schools and churches helped by organizing volunteers and donating supplies. Another real life experience. Hundreds of people were trapped inside the airport. Water surrounded the buildings and cars, trucks, and planes had been tossed everywhere. A fire had started in one section of the airport. Yumi recalls that the people at the airport tried to stay calm. Everyone kept helping one another, rationing food and drinks that came from shops and vending machines inside the airport. People controlled themselves, taking very little food or drinks. They had no idea how long they would be stranded there, so they were careful to make all their supplies last. So this is Saturday at 5 p.m. Search and rescue. Military helicopters had been flying over the disaster zone to assess the damage. Slowly, long lines of trucks reached hard hit areas. The rescuers work was difficult and often heartbreaking. Nearly 10,000 people were missing in the town of Minamisaniriku. That's hard. 600 people were trapped on the roof of an elementary school in Sendai. Doctors and nurses were waving pink umbrellas to attract rescuers' attention at a hospital in Iwanuma. Down here it says, quake, hashtag quake, damage much worse than imagined. Tears in her eyes when we arrived. We're on Saturday at 5.15. While most of the work involved recovering those who had been killed, emergency workers rescued many people too. Using specially trained dogs, they carefully searched for victims in the rubble. Another real life experience. After three days, Yumi was finally able to leave the airport. Her car had been carried off by the tsunami, so she, like many others, walked home. Yumi was thrilled to see that her family was fine and her home was still standing, but water had destroyed nearly all of her neighborhood. Many neighbors had lost everything. Several people moved in with Yumi's family for a long time. They had no gas, water, or electricity. All right, that's the end. And then here we have the glossary. So it's giving us words and what they mean. And then our index, if we wanted to go find something specific. So when it comes to scientific text, readers can use different kinds of information from the text and those text features we talked about earlier to help us understand what's going on. So let's start with this glossary. How does this help us as readers 
understand what's going on in this story. Take a minute, pause this video, and think that question through. So hopefully you realize that this glossary is taking these scientific words that might be tough for us because they're do those domain-specific words, and they're helping us understand them. They're giving us those definitions. So while we're reading, if we didn't understand what the radiation meant, we could go look up that it's harmful particles given out by radioactive substances. And they can help us as readers understand those more difficult words and concepts. Good job, fourth graders. So now let's look back at pages 21 and page 25 and see how the pictures on those pages add to our understanding of the challenges the tsunami caused. So what does this picture show us? Yeah, it shows us the damage, all of the rubble, um, how destructive that tsunami was. Um, and it shows them these sad people realizing what's happened to their town. What about on this page? What do those pictures help us see, fourth graders? Yeah, it helps us see those rescue workers, come, the emergency workers that are helping rescue people. It shows um, them looking around and it shows just the destruction still. Okay, it's time for your reading response. So explain how the tsunami affected people. How did it affect them? Use examples, evidence, and details from the text to support your answer. So we've given you a few pages here to look back at. Tell us, how did this tsunami change these people's lives? What did it do? Have a great rest of your day, fourth graders. Thank you. Bye.